One of the bankers who has seen the NBFC space is now a young banker, as in the bank is still barely a year or two old and is grappling with digitization just as the demonetization hits the sector. I'm speaking of Rajiv Lal, the managing director and CEO of uh, IDFC Bank. Mr. Lal, thank you very much for joining us. Well, one of your uh, worries perhaps when you started off as a bank was that your current and savings account is limited. Uh, this must be manna from heaven. How much have your current and savings account, especially your savings account, shot up uh, in the past week? Well, it's, uh, you know, uh, this question is not as relevant for us because we are uh, very young. Most of the um, action that is happening so far is really uh, at branches. And since we have uh, deliberately and by design uh, eschewed uh, branches, um, we have avoided the cost of creating that infrastructure but um, um, by for the same reason mm. um, we are not uh, uh, the beneficiaries mm -hmm. of huge amounts of deposits uh, pouring through our doors okay. um, that said in that said in um, in rural geographies yeah um, we have seen um, quite a substantial uptick mm -hmm. um, in deposit taking. Do you think... Uh, uh, so... Uh, uh, I'm going to ask you if this demonetization is going to be a welcome catalyst. Uh, you always wanted uh, digital banking and that was the path you were uh, uh, starting out with. Uh, have you seen better acceptance of uh, uh, digital products, uh, M-PIN and such like? Yeah, so we've seen a huge amount of activity uh, around our uh, micro ATMs, mm. um, which is basically uh, uh, biometrically enabled uh, authentication device that facilitates the delivery of uh, basic banking, including mm. cash delivery um, in remote areas. So that uh, has been very, very popular mm -hmm. um, in addressing the immediate inconvenience to customers. Mm -hmm. And we've adapted that even to uh, the city landscape. Mm -hmm. um, so in the last couple of days, we have deployed um, um, these machines to help senior citizens in, across the cities uh, that we are operating in just to deliver um, cash to them okay. and in that process they are actually fortuitously also opening bank accounts with us okay. um, because uh, they are able to access cash from um, from bank accounts um, the proceeds of which they are transferring into IDFC bank accounts so that they can withdraw cash Mm -hmm. um, right there and then. Okay. So that is one. That's one uh, uh, immediate beneficiary um, mm -hmm. in terms of businesses that we have. But uh, you know, uh, the the environment is changing so rapidly. Mm -hmm. Our expectation is that this will very definitely uh, have a positive impact on um, digitization. Um, of various kinds at um, various levels, but that will take uh, longer to 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 play out. Mm. So, uh, cashless solutions, um, card usage, um, post penetration, mm. um, that that is accelerating um, at a very rapid pace, and we are uh, strategically, I think, well poised to. Um, exploit that opportunity and that is what we are deploying quite aggressively now. Okay, well let me come to the asset side of the balance sheet. Uh, uh, you perhaps haven't given too many real estate loans but uh, let me first come to the real estate and the SME segments. Uh, are you s expecting a lot of stress? Um, so we don't have, uh, I mean again that's one of the advantages of being young. We don't have a uh, we hardly have a book um, that is focused on lower end SMEs mm. um, at this point. Um, but uh, vicariously, mm. uh, it's really interesting what's, what is happening out there. Okay. Uh, because, uh, you know, businesses that, um, whose lifeblood has been cash. Yes. Um, they are um, uh, in various stages of seizing up. Mm. Um, as we speak, 
Mm. Um, and so, uh, uh, whether this is going to be a temporary dislocation mm. or it's going to be more permanent, mm. how it affects the balance sheets of banks, generally speaking, mm. um, is, um, is early to say. Mm. But when the dust settles, mm. when the dust settles, see, there are two things that are happening. Mm. So, one is GST, GST is being implemented, yes. right? Yes. Uh, now, on top of GST, we have demonetization. Yes. The impact of both of these is to really force the small and mid sized merchant to convert their ways of doing business from informal to formal. formal. You know, so a lot of these people who are, uh, you know, working on a IOU basis using just purchases mm -hmm. um, and cash would exchange hands. They would be under invoicing and mm -hmm. all that kind of activity was happening at, at massive scale, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, what? So uh, as these people are forced, so if you if you want to take advantage of a GST credit. Mm -hmm. Um, you cannot be under invoicing anymore. So, right? so Mr. Lal, uh, therefore, the uh, net impact uh, of uh, both the demonetization and GST, which starts off almost immediately, yes. you know, April 1st, if things were to yes. go, would yeah. be that you can, uh, what, see higher prices as well, as well higher tax collections, yeah. as well higher banking business? Yeah. So, yeah, so I don't know about higher prices necessarily, but uh, certainly it will mean a greater throughput of volumes through the formal banking system, undoubtedly. Okay. So that's really positive for all banks, mm -hmm. um, medium term. Okay. Um, second, it means uh, greater tax collection for government, which is an uh, unambiguous positive uh, for the FISC. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you know there's a temporary rise in prices, um, I don't know. There is certainly a temporary dislocation, mm. and there okay. is a, a transfer mm. um, of wealth, mm. you know, at different levels that is happening from certain uh, uh, certain individuals to government, um, from certain merchants to other merchants. Mm. Um, and so on and yes. so forth. <laughs> I get so your point. Are, sir. Money are actually mutes. pretty, pretty. Yeah, uh, we are in uncharted territory. It's very difficult. Okay. I mean, I've used the analogy yeah. to you know, it's like we've shot ourselves in the um, 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 you know with a with a dye, injected yes. our body, yeah. the national body, with the dye. That's right. And as this dye moves through our our, our veins, we are figuring out um, where it will you know, emerge. Where the bottlenecks yes. are. I agree with yeah, you. Exactly. I, I agree with you. But I think you're better placed to speak about it simply because you're both a finance man and an economist. You know, you spoke about seizure in some industries. Now, you know, for instance, yeah. I, I mean, the obvious example is real estate. What can the ripple yeah. effects be? And more importantly, how long? It's difficult. It's difficult to say because, you know, it depends really on, I mean, the, the, the people are very ingenuous. Um, um, particularly in this country, mm. as you, <laughs> as you well know, uh, so there is, there are, there are all kinds of arbitrages that seem to be at work. Mm -hmm. um, so th there are, there are people who have, um, let's call it surplus cash that mm. is legitimate, mm. um, that now have a very important um, facilitating role mm. um, to help out those that are uh, cash short. Mm. Um, so that is that is smoothing out some of the some of the some of the rough edges. But you know, to to provide this service, yes, right, there is a price to be paid. Absolutely, um, and and okay. that is causing so, that is causing a transfer of wealth. Mm. The scale of which is difficult is is difficult to assess. Now, mm. as this transfer of wealth happens, mm. um, uh, there are some people who uh, who will become uh, casualties, mm. whose businesses will really stop functioning. Absolutely. Right? Um, um, and, but there are those for whom uh, this will be a temporary inconvenience, mm. and then you know uh, they will become part of, of the of the formal economy. But if I if I had to hazard a guess, mm. my guess would be that um, larger players um, uh, with larger balance sheets and capital mm. 
um, will withstand the shock better. Uh -huh. So there will be a greater formalization of intermediation, particularly in retail, for example. Fair enough. Right? Um, 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 and there will be some small to medium-sized traders who will... Uh, who will not be able to recover. Absolutely. Now, net net, what what does that mean for the economy? Um, it's it's very difficult. It's I very can, difficult to say. I, I, um, I can see uh, your point, but uh, uh, Mr. Yeah. Lal, we have to take a break. Uh, we have to come back and discuss what perhaps IDFC is best able to assess, or Mr. Rajiv Lal is best able to assess the infrastructure space and how it perhaps will be impacted by the demonetization. Back in a jiffy.